So if you've had a prostate biopsy and your urologist has reached out to you and given you the result, which is positive for prostate cancer, and he's spoken to you or she's spoken to you about the nuance of the result and you're trying to get your head around things, then this video could be for you. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chevere. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic, which is located on the Gold Coast here in Australia. In the following video, I want to highlight for you the information that we get when someone has a prostate biopsy, and we're trying to understand that information better to determine what type of prostate cancer you have and what the next steps are going to be. For those of you new to the channel, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more things prostate. Okay, let's get into it. When you have a prostate biopsy, which is done to try and determine if someone has prostate cancer or not, there are small tissue samples which are sent to the lab. Now, the results usually take anywhere from two days through to 10 days to come back. And there are a variety of different aspects to that result that we're trying to determine your specific prostate cancer characteristics. Now, the first thing that we look at is, is there actually prostate cancer found? And so that's a binary question. Either someone does have cancer or they do not. The next aspect to the biopsy that we look at is something called the Gleason score. Now, the Gleason score has been around for a long time. It was initially described 40 or 50 years ago to characterize the grade or the severity of prostate cancer. Now, in today's scale, we have three numbers, a three, a four, and a five. And the Gleason score is the sum of the two most predominant patterns that are seen on a biopsy. Now, by way of uh, explanation, the most common type of cancer I see at the prostate clinic is a Gleason score of a three plus four equals seven. Now, what that means is that the majority of that man's disease is pattern three, i.e. the least aggressive form of cancer we see, and he has a smaller amount of more aggressive disease, pattern four. So he's a three plus four equals seven. If someone has a Gleason score of four plus three equals seven, obviously the end number is the same, but the subtle difference between those two grades is that someone with a four plus three has more pattern four than they do pattern three. And so a four, three, seven is a more aggressive cancer than a three plus four equals seven. So that's the kind of the cornerstone of what we actually look at on a biopsy. We also have something called ISUP grading groups. So think of this just as a grading group of a cancer. And the least aggressive is a grade one, and the most aggressive is a grade five. Grade one cancers are Gleason three plus three equals six. Grade five cancers are anything that has pattern five. Now, a grade two cancer is the three plus four equals seven I was just talking about and a grade three cancer is the four plus three equals seven. So you can see in the grading group example that a four, three, seven grades higher than a three, four, seven, which is a grade two. Now, if we start dialing down into the nuance below that, the next aspect that we look at is how many cores are involved and what percentage of a core that has cancer within it is replaced by cancer. Now those characteristics, we're trying to determine how much cancer does someone actually have in their prostate. And when we're dialing down the nuance of someone's situation, we will also pair that up with the appearance that someone has on their MRI scan and also the appearance on a PET scan. And it's the fusion or the accumulation of that data that tries to predict for us how we think someone's cancer is going to behave. And on the basis of that, we would make treatment recommendations if we thought, if we thought treatment was appropriate for that man. Now, the other aspect that we can get on a biopsy is looking at things called, for example, extra prostatic extension. Is there any evidence on the biopsy that there can be some cancer cells beyond the shell? Is there any extension into the seminal vesicle? Is there evidence of lymphovascular invasion or perineural invasion? 
So we've got some technical terms there, but in essence, what these terms are highlighting or looking at are subset characteristics below the Gleason score and below the, the grading group that try to predict where we think someone sits on that scale of non-aggressive through to aggressive. And obviously, the greater the number of ticks, the more of those things that are present, it's reflective of the biology of someone's cancer in that they have a more aggressive tumor, and therefore that will feed into decisions that we make with regards treatment. Okay, so once we've got that biopsy result, depending on where you are geographically around the world, your urologist will probably recommend to you to have a staging scan done. And that will vary depending on the service that you have available to you and, and where you are on the planet. Certainly here in Australia and specifically at the Prostate Clinic, everyone who has a new diagnosis of prostate cancer is imaged with a PSMA PET scan. It's a whole body scan and the aim of that scan is to make sure that there is no spread of someone's cancer and then we have, if you like, all of the pieces of the puzzle and we can make a definitive decision or recommendation with regards should someone have treatment and the options available to them. Please, if you get benefit from this video and you have a question and you'd like to interact with our channel on a regular basis, please follow the link down below and think about becoming a member to our channel. We have a live event that is hosted on the last Thursday of uh, every month. It is at 7.30 p.m. Australian Standard Time. If you become a member to the channel, you have exclusive access to these sessions where you can ask a question and we will discuss it live on air. Uh, to give you some clarity. All right, as always, if you get benefit from the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want to know more about your prostate, have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.